So, hi guys. Sorry I haven't been filming any videos. I know it's been a very long time. Um, it's been over a year, so again, I apologise for that. It's been a busy year. Uh, I got married, and I have a daughter, got a new job. So, uh, life throws things at you, you have to prioritise. But I'm back, and I'm here for a brand new review of a fragrance that You've probably not come across, however, it's an absolute gem, niche quality in my opinion. And funnily enough, it's actually another um, Tom Ford creation. So, let's get into the review. So you could probably tell by the TV at the back, it's a Gucci. So this is Gucci Rush for men. So this is actually a really hard fragrance to find. It came out in the year 2000 and it got discontinued fairly quickly and it's really hard to find a bottle but if you do find it um, you're very lucky because they're really hard to come across so this is um, it's a men's fragrance as I mentioned and it was during the time when Tom Ford was the creative director for Gucci um, he's the guy that turned Gucci around he, 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 all credit to him um, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're actually going to unbox this this is completely completely sealed um i'll show you a close-up of the bottle of the box sorry um and this is uh yeah a super hard fragrance to find so i'm actually quite excited to open it haven't smelt this before um even though i've had it for a while i just haven't opened it yet um, I thought it'd be good to make a video on it. So here we are. Um, let's quickly just go through the, the box and bottle. So the box is actually just a, a plastic sleeve, as you can see here. And the bottle slides in and out through here. Um, it's supposed to be clear, but with it being nearly 23 years old, it's, it's yellowed and discoloured a bit. But otherwise, when I take out the bottle, that should be white. I can see from the size it is white. Um... Just a quick thing, uh, at the back, you can tell when it was um, released because it says Scan and SA, which is the distributor. Now, I think prior to 1996, maybe, it used to say Scan and Parfum, etc., etc., whereas now it just says Scan and SA uh, for this time frame. Then it changed to, I think, Procter and Gamble and uh, Coty most recently, as, as far as I remember. Now, to to actually find out when this was created and released, you could probably see the batch code just underneath. So this means um, I'll go through it for you. So it says O one seven two zero. So the O one is the facility number. Um, it's more of an internal code for Gucci. Then you have a 7, which indicates the month, which is uh, July. And then you have 2-0. Now, the way the numbers work, they can be rolling. So the 2-0 could mean 2020, but in this case, it's the year 2000. So, uh, let's open it. Um, yeah. Let's give it a first sniff um, and see how it smells. This feels like sacrilege. <laughs> um, uh, by the way, this is in this condition, brand new cellophane sealed. You're looking at around three hundred pounds for the hundred mil. You might get lucky and find cheaper ones, but they'll probably be opened. Um, but it's very rare to find a sealed bottle, so um, this is why it feels uh, like I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> okay, so, put the cellophane aside. So as you can see, the bottle slides out from the side. So this is the box, essentially it's just a plastic sleeve. So we'll put this aside. And, so this is the bottle. It's a very... 90s early 2000s style it's got an inbuilt uh, atomizer so there's no lid etc you just press the top 
and um, it's a plastic bottle so it's a, it's a plastic container encased in plastic as you can probably see there and then it's got a um a metal front and back and it says gucci rush for men on the front um i don't know what gucci is doing they, they've had so many good fragrances that they've discontinued envy gucci pour on two really good stuff but it's a shame uh and from what i hear this is meant to be very very good now this is supposed to be a um a sandalwood fragrance now i love sandalwood my sauce underwood is one of my favorite notes in all of perfumery um i i have uh sandalwood oil uh i enjoy uh incense um so sandalwood is something I, I really enjoy and this is supposed to be one of the better sandalwoods now from my experience some of the good sandalwoods that are available are comme de garçons wonderwood and um tam dao by diptyque so I've heard similarities between this and Comme de Garçons Wonderwood. However, I've heard Wonderwood is a lot more peppery. So we'll, we'll come on to that um, and see, see how it smells. Now, from what I know, this mainly revolves around uh, sandalwood, cypress and cedarwood with hints of violet leaf um, and a couple of other things. Um, but I'll, I'll give you a... Uh, a description of how I think it smells and uh, yeah let's let's get into it so <coughs> excuse me uh, you can probably tell I'm wearing a hat it's cold I have a little bit of a cold apologies so ready okay okay so I've just been hit with a blast of sandalwood um, super familiar fragrant note. It's extremely pleasant. Now it's not anything like you probably find today where it's, even though this is synthetic, it's not super synthetic with a lot of the stuff you find today. Um, I feel like today they all revolve around a, a scent profile of, of matching everything else. Like this sickly sweet, uh, ambery fragrance which uh, just general crowd pleasers um, and I think it probably started with one million that's when things started to go into that, that direction where they all smelled the same whereas this um, I, know, I, I get where the similarities come from with Comme de Garçons Wonderwood like I mentioned it's true that the, the pepper note isn't there um, so you get this really buttery, creamy sandalwood, really nice sandalwood. Um, this is more of a my sauce sandalwood. The Australian sandalwood is a little bit more citrusy, a little bit more limey, whereas this is very smooth, very creamy. And that is really pleasant. That's really nice. You can smell the cedarwood, the cypress. You definitely get the violet leaf. That's, that's definitely there. Um, what I'd probably say is with this, imagine, um, just picture yourself, not India, I would say Australia, but let's say you're in a, in a forest, but it's been cultivated with the Santalum album trees of India, which is the Indian sandalwood tree. So you're running through this forest, but you have this clean air. Um, Australia has, has nice air. So you, you're running through this forest and the trees are all around you. And you see shrubs of uh, different different uh, f uh, foliage and um, bark that's fallen onto the floor, and there may be some cypress trees, um, and maybe maybe even there's some cedar cedar cedarwood trees there. Um, but that mix of just woody notes and but but predominantly that that forest of sandalwood. So you're running through and you're just hit with this blast of air, fragrant air of, of all these woods mixing up, but it's still very fresh, still very clean. Um, you have a lot of energy, you're focused. Um, that's what this really evokes. It, it's, I mean, it's aptly named in terms of rush. Rush really applies to this. You do get that sense of rush and focus and endorphins and it puts a smile on your face. It's, it's really pleasant. 
Now, it's not the strongest. Um, I'm having to get quite close to smell it, so I don't know whether that's the fragrance itself, but I have heard, with it being so old, um, encased in plastic, it does deteriorate the, the aroma molecules, and they, they tend to deteriorate over time, especially when they're synthetic. Um, if they were natural, it'd probably be stronger than it was before, but um, in this case, uh, it doesn't really project. However, um, like I said, I do have a bit of a cold, so it could may well be that other people can smell it, but right now, um, it's very close to the skin. But you can, I don't know if you can see, but there is a sheen, um, so it is very oily. So there could be some natural oils in this. Um, in terms of longevity, um, I can't say right now, uh, as it's an, in, an initial spray, however, from what I've heard, it can really vary. If you have a, a good batch, which is held up over time, it can last seven, eight hours a day. Some of them, you might only get two to three hours. Um, and some I've heard have gone completely rancid in the bottle where you can't smell anything. It just smells bitter and sour and uh, not pleasant at all. So I'm very lucky that this smells very nice. Now, Let's come on to the hype behind it. I see why there was hype. And I can imagine when it was readily available at the price point it was, it was probably easy to get. Everyone loved it. Then it gained a cult following. Now, this can be a problem because people will start paying niche quality prices that have a huge amount of natural essential oils, making it very expensive for something which initially cost maybe... 50 pounds 50 dollars etc now is that a good thing um for collectors selling it sure but for a collector who's collecting it not so much unless it evokes memories of the past where you really are attached to this fragrance i just think it's not really worth it if you can get it cheaper sure go for it otherwise there, there are fragrances I'd actually recommend, which is, in in my opinion, Winderwood is probably the closest to this, um, and a lot stronger. Again, readily available. They're new fragrances. They're fresh. Um, so I, I'd probably advise against getting this. Um, I do understand the following. I do understand why um, it does cost as much as it does, and why people love it. It does smell very nice. Um, and this kind of sandalwood you don't really come across nowadays, um, which is a shame. Uh, but sandalwood is becoming more scarce, more rare, and it's becoming expensive everywhere, even in India. Um, yeah, I, I think it's on the endangered list. It is a protected species, so it makes sense. But there are some good synthetic sandalwoods out there, um, which are, again, readily available. So, um, so to come on to this... Uh, in terms of a rating, I'd probably give it, um, for the scent itself, I'd say a solid 8 out of 10. Now, f in terms of projection with this batch, uh, probably say 4 or 5 and longevity, I can't comment. Um, but overall, this is probably, this specific one is probably six out of ten um but uh it's very nice it's good i'm happy um yeah yeah great fragrance guys so uh keep keep watching um i do aim to continue this uh this channel and keep releasing videos um and i have some e extra time um and this isn't on purpose, however, it seems like all the fragrances I'm going to do or have done are Tom Ford ones, the YSL M7, now this, and now I've got three Tom Fords that I'll be reviewing as well, so I've got the um, effing fabulous uh, uh, Neroli Portofino and Oudwood Intense, so I'll come on to them and maybe a couple of others. I might even come on to some of the oils I have, some of the things that I've made. So um, keep watching, guys. Um, 
and uh, you'll see me again soon. Thanks.